Right, so we're going to go over video sharing. Um, obviously, there's sites that allow you to upload and share videos with others. Video sharing has become huge. Um, in some platforms, videos um, are more received than um, photos. So sites like Instagram, if you put a video on there, you'll tend to get more views um, and more likes, and there will be more engagement level. Um, they now even let you have up to 60 seconds, where it used to be 15 seconds. Um, Facebook, um, you know, they used to be photos had um, the most interaction, engagement, but you're starting to see an increase in videos um, over the last year. And so including videos um, into your content plan is important. And having um, and using platforms that are going to reach your audience is important. And there are so many platforms out there now that you can utilize um, to reach your audience. Um, YouTube is the second largest search engine. So having a YouTube page is really beneficial for your brand. And um, it allows you, you know, to have your own channel of content and help you reach your audience and also, you know, have a library of your content. So if you did a commercial or something else, um, but it should, lets people, um, you know, come in and you can even, you know, do reviews on products and really feel that human connection um, instead of just seeing written, you know, content and, um, and photos. It allows you to do interviews. You can have even do live content. Um, and live content is something that a lot of these platforms are starting to play with a little bit more. So, you know, you'd have YouTube and then you can also do, um, you know, YouTube live where you can do interviews with people who aren't there locally and even put up graphics and then it will save the video and um, you can, it will archive it to your page. Um, you have Vine, you know, the short videos, Vimeo, where people, again, you know, put more of a um, content library. Periscope, you have, you know, the live video feed and it will even alert people on Twitter and Facebook when you're um, doing a live feed. Um, Facebook has a live video option now as well. Um, and even Snapchat has a video, although it does go away. So you have all of these different platforms and they each have their own purpose. And you have to figure out which one is right for your brand or for your campaign. Um, some ideas of when you're creating content on these platforms is, you know, well, number one, you want to be creative. You want to stand out from everyone else. Um, you know, practice it. Make sure you have a good background, people can hear you, see you, um, that you edit your content, you, that you, you know, you practice it and you get better and you, maybe even you add in vlogs, but you want to make sure that it, you know, it's, it's well edited. Um, you want to, can also show, um, how maybe if you have a product, how it's useful and the different ways to use it or do something, you know, funny and creative within it. Um, it helps you connect with emotions. And in sports, emotions are used in a lot of ads because people can go back to their childhood and they, or they know that moment of fighting for something and working hard towards something. Um, it can also be used to showcase new products or, you know, in combining that with a the creative, they have that one blender, you know, will it blend type thing. They made a campaign and people were sending in all these different products to see will they blend. Maybe you're not going to blend a cell phone, but they wanted to show that their blades are strong enough that they can. Um, and so they, you know, combine things in a creative way. Uh, another way you can do it, especially in sports, is going behind the scenes and giving people, you know, access to the um, brand page or your athletes access to the brand page and let them go behind the scenes for a day and show, you know, things from their perspective or their life or, you know, the behind the scenes of your team or even the coach and let your fans be drawn in and connect with your team. All right, so we're going to create a YouTube channel. And you can just do this from your regular Google account. And if you already have a YouTube account, you can create a new channel. Um, now, it will not let you customize the URL unless this channel has been established or you have so many subscribers or unless you follow the um, intricate instructions um, of adding code into your blog and, or website. Um, and you can do that, but it's not required. So what we're going to do here is you're going to create a YouTube channel. And then we're going to go to tinyurl.com and you're going to create a custom shortened URL for your page. So we're going to go ahead and do this right now. Um, if you were to, by the way, create a custom URL, you can follow the steps on the screen where you would, you know, click that little wheel, you see the advanced button, hit create a custom URL, and then you would enter it in. 
but be very careful and make sure it's spelled correctly if you get this opportunity because you can't change it once you've done it. Um, so you want to make sure everything is perfect before you create that custom URL. Okay. So let's go in right now and we're going to go to YouTube. And you would come over here. If it wants to play nice with me. So you go here and click on your icon. There we go. And YouTube settings. And you can see, um, see all my channels or create a new channel. So if I want to create a new channel, I would do SMM3561. Oops, all right. I'm going to do a product or brand. I agree. Click done. And here is my channel. Now you can get the URL. You're going to copy. Um, actually, we'll get the shortened URL. Um, it would just be the one part of it. Uh, let's see. We're going to go to my channel to get that. Um, I do want to point out, though, because you guys are going to be adding your channel art, you're going to add it right here. And so when you go to add your channel art, it's going to have different dimensions for you, and you need to make sure that you customize it and you create your, um, your image based off of these dimensions right here. And it's not going to seem like it fits that cover image, but you'll want to adjust it so it does fit in the space, and you'll want to play with it so it fits it. Um, and you can put how to create channel art right there, and it will teach you how to do it. But you want to make sure that you have something there. Um, all right, so going back to here, you're going to go to my channel. All right, so now we're going to click up here. You have the URL, Command C, copy it. And then we're going to go to um, Tiny URL. And we're going to put this here. And I'm going to paste it, Command V. And I'm going to back over here and I put SMM3561. Make a tiny URL. And then you're going to see that it created it. You can Command C to copy it. And then go ahead and paste it on your support document for your URLs that you'll be turning in. And it's that simple. Um, now, when you're making your follow buttons, if it says, you know, youtube.com forward slash, you're going to come back in here and you'll take slash channel. You'll take that code and put it there. Um, but the tiny URL is one that you could paste on other pages, and this way people can remember that a lot easier than the long string of code.